Whether it was your wedding or a wedding you attended, what is the worst behavior you've seen from a wedding guest? Story one, my aunt texted me two days before my wedding, asking if her daughter could wear white to my wedding, tempering the request with, she has already bought the dress. It's expensive. She doesn't have anything else to wear. It's so late. I don't know what to do. Since I also happen to have bought an expensive white dress in which to attend my wedding, my response to that question was a simple, no, obviously not. And what do you know? Turns out my cousin did have more than just one single expensive white dress in her cavernous closet of clothes and found something to wear. Story 2. 1. Mentioned this story in a previous thread. I photographed a wedding back in 2015, wherein during his speech at the reception, the best man inadvertently revealed to the 200-plus guests that the bride was pregnant. Up until that point, only a very select few people knew. The look of pure rage shock embarrassment she gave him was staggering. Many moons ago, I was a guest at a wedding, and during the reception, one of the bridesmaids got so pissy drunk that she bum-rushed the very full men's room to see what was happening and to take a pour out the water in one of the commodes, I presume. She had to be helped out of the men's room. Story 3. Maid of honor sister of the bride spent 20 minutes talking about how nerdy the groom was, how she and all her friends couldn't believe when they started dating, mentioned going home with a new guy every week, brought up how her mom and dad didn't like his parents for some flipping reason. She was underage and clearly drunk at a dry wedding, which best man managed to salvage the situation by delivering literally the best best man speech I've ever heard. Edit. A few people asking what made the speech great. I posted this as a reply way down this thread, but here it is. The best man was the bride's brother, who had been friends with the groom for a long time, and he mentioned how the he had noticed that the groom always respected every woman he dated. The best man had known that his sister had always fancied the so when they started dating, he had no qualms about whether his friend would be good to his sister. There were some appropriate jokes, the kind brothers would share, some anecdotes, but it was mostly about how the groom had always been the best man's brother, and now they were truly brothers, and he invited us to toast, with iced tea or lemonade or an Arnie Palmer, their union. It was a good speech, but it was made even better by the train wreck of a speech that had come before. Story 4. Not too outrageous, but a one of my best friend's wedding. His drunk co-worker tried to fudge literally everyone there. Tried to make out with a bunch of his married friends, male and female. Grinded on the 80-year-old grandmother in a wheelchair. Pulled random family members into grindy dances. It was really awkward and everyone rejected her advances. Oh, and did I mention she had her husband there too? He basically just sat in a chair drinking beer, watching like he'd seen it a million times. Seemed like a real decent guy too. I felt bad for him. Worst at my own wedding was just a drunk girlfriend of a friend doing stripper moves in a short dress sans underwear. But that was possibly the most popular event at the wedding, so no harm done. Story 5. My uncle walked up to me on the dance floor at my wedding and handed me a small envelope. There's not much in here, but this is for you. Don't tell your husband you have it. And when you get divorced in a few years, call me and I will send you more. Then he turned and walked away. Story 6. Beautiful day, blue sky, etc. Waterfront estate, large gardens flowers. Ceremony under rose pergola, real organ plays wedding march. Bridegroom fully decked out, saying their vows. Out of nowhere, the family bulldog wanders over, sits down beside them. Vows still in progress, probably 300 people watching, and proceeds to noisily lick his balls. My sides hurt afterwards as I was laughing so hard, after the nuptials of course. Story 7. Probs to late for this, but my cousin's wedding. Dad's side. The day before my mother found some suspicious texts from a woman on my dad's phone, knowing that this would end up being a, I told her not to go to the wedding. Welp, she went. She proceeds to get sloppy drunk, refuses to sit at the same table as him, and cow talks him the entire night to his family, loudly. They end up getting into this huge blowout fight in front of the DJ booth in the middle of the reception. I've never been so humiliated in my entire life. My cousin, who didn't talk to us much in the first place, basically stopped talking to all of us afterwards. I feel really terrible about that. In the car ride home, they're both wasted and don't understand why I'm furious with them for causing a scene at someone else's wedding. They both thought I was the one being overly dramatic about it. They're still married. Married and miserable. Story 8. A wedding planner told me this story. Apparently, right before the wedding, the planner found the maid of honor passed out with prescription bottles all over. She had tried to terminate herself right before the ceremony. They had to call an ambulance and get her out of there. Planner did this all without the bride noticing. Bride later asked the planner where her MOH went and they told her that she went home sick. Bride found out the day after her wedding. Edit. Just to add some more info, the planner talked and handled this situation with the rest of the wedding party and or bride's parents. She wasn't just making the call herself not to tell the bride. The planner, bride's friends and family probably came to an agreement. 
Also, this is California, where weddings probably range from $30-$100K. Unless that wedding took place in someone's home backyard, Etsy, but from what I can recall, it did. I also believe bride and groom's parents paid for the wedding. Story 9. So this wasn't a rude guest. It was a rude bride and groom. They had a 5 p.m. reception with no food. None. Not even a cheese platter. They didn't warn us beforehand, so we didn't know to eat before going. The reception was in a very rural location, so we couldn't run anywhere to grab a bite. We had to write our address on a thank you note envelope, which I've seen before. But we were also directed to write our own thank you notes. Finally, at 9 p.m., I told my husband we had to leave because I'm starving, um, and they wouldn't let us leave until we helped fold tables and chairs. Story 10? At a wedding where the reception was a potluck and the bride and groom were vegan. There was an open mic for friends of the bride and groom to say stuff. One of their friends said they always put secret lard into all of the vegan dishes they made, including the one they brought for the wedding potluck. Boo Ed out of the wedding. Story 11. My wife's and my wedding didn't have too much drama. No kids allowed. It was started explicitly on the invitation. We wanted everyone to have a good time and to leave the kids at home. All of our friends knew, understood, and appreciated the opportunity to lose. Everyone except the wife of one of my wife's friend from high school. We really want to bring little what's her name. She's quiet. Nope. No kids. Are you sure? We've never been to Atlanta and we'd love to bring her with us. Nope. No kids. No exceptions. Well, guess who brought their kid with them to Atlanta? One of my wife's other friends tipped us off because they were in the same hotel. So we got a hold of them and told them she couldn't come. But we bought a really cute dress and we don't have a sitter. She can wear it in the hotel room while you send your husband to the wedding. To his credit, her friend had tried over and over again to convince his wife to leave the kid at home with his mom, but she thought she could force the issue. Instead, she got to buy a dress to hang out in a hotel room with her daughter. Story 12. At my cousin's wedding, my mom stabbed a guy, after which a few of my stepbrothers dragged him out and beat the cow out of him. He had been loudly talking cow about my dead stepdad. I was a little disappointed when my own wedding, a couple of years later, went by without a single stabbing. Story 13. There was this girl I worked with who was marrying her high school sweetheart. They didn't have much money to spend on the wedding, so the bride told me it was going to be pretty bare bones. I told her it was no big deal. After all, my parents got married on a $500 credit card, and here they are, 35 years later, still together, despite my mother's numerous attempts to murder my father. So my girlfriend at the time, and I arrived just as the reception was starting, allow me to set the scene. Just inside the door, a 40-something woman is belting out, you give love a bad name on the karaoke machine. There are two trays of cold cuts from the grocery store, probably a dozen cases of Bud Light, and a stack of cups, so the people who don't want Bud Light can go get some water from the drinking fountain in the hall. Guess where the bulk of the budget went? So about 30 minutes later, the girlfriend and I went out to her car to roast a bone. On our way back, Bon Jovi chick is outside having a cane. She stopped my girlfriend to ask about her earrings and where she got them. I got them at this cool piercing shop by the beach where they make all of their own... Do they just do earrings or other stuff? Because I just got these pierced, and I'd love to find some cool studs to put in. She then yanked her dress down and popped out her giant fake ball to show off her pierced ball. Then a crowd formed for the viewing of the jugs. There were probably eight or nine women who came over to ask all sorts of questions. And here I am, the lone guy, standing there looking at a Girls Gone Wild video happening in real time. Then she said, I got my clit pierced too, but you'll have to follow me to the ladies' room to see that one. I ain't about to hike my dress up in the parking lot. Then my girlfriend and close to a dozen white trash girls trotted after this woman to the ladies' room, where they looked at her lady business. Story 14. I was invited as a plus one to a wedding where the bride and groom were both in polygamous relationships. When it came to speeches, they each invited another partner upstage. The bride's partner talked about how they met and gave examples of how she was a great person. He also talked about how he was friends with the groom and he was great too. Then the groom's partner got up. She talked about how they met at a party, fell in love, and that their relationship was really special. Not one word about the bride. The groom was just sitting at his chair giggling and beaming at partner. He got up and went to huckus her on stage. There were some people staring in surprise, and on one particular table, his side of the family, they were really cringing in embarrassment. Story 15. Not a bad thing, but very memorable. My brother got married in a Catholic church. He had five groomsmen. The priest hated when a phone went off and would embarrass the person if it happened during Mass. Anyway, a phone goes off. He glares at all the groomsmen. They are furiously checking pockets. The groom is checking. The congregation is all checking, all in a panic. Then the priest reaches under his robe and pulls out his phone and promptly shuts it off. The place went crazy. Story 16. My husband's crazy aunt, who was married at the time, took off with our DJ at the end of the night. We had to field a bunch of calls from her husband asking where she was and when she was coming home. 
Essentially, she went missing for a week after our wedding while she was with our DJ. So awkward. Story 17. My wife's grandmother managed to insult every member of my immediate family and several other guests before the wedding even started. I refuse to speak to her to this day. My wedding BTW. Forgot to mention, this wasn't like a one thing she did that insulted everyone. She managed to do it individually, person by person, without much effort on her part. A specialized snowflake like insults all around. Story 18. I've told this story before but never tire of it because it still pisses me off. I was a bridesmaid for my college BFF's wedding. She was engaged to a guy whose parents had always been Catholic, but suddenly got super serious about it a few years prior. This including having a real wedding in a Catholic church, after they'd been married 25 years, because their original wedding had been at City Hall. These parents were initially thrilled about the engagement, until bridegroom said they would be having the wedding at a campground, not in a Catholic church. They put a lot of pressure on the couple to change their minds, but they didn't budge. The father eventually said he would not be attending, and refused to let the groom's younger brother be ring-bearer. The mom, however, said she would go, even if she didn't agree with it. When we got to the campground, all arrangements were made with the idea that the groom's mother would be there, including who would walk her to her seat, where she'd sit at the reception, etc. There's no cell reception at this campground, and the only phone line is at the camp office. About an hour before the wedding, the phone rang endlessly until one of the groomsmen was able to reach it, and heard the groom's dad say, put the groom on the phone. The groom answered, and his father said, your mother will not be attending your wedding, because this is an abomination. Click. I was with the bride when she found out about this. She was bawling, angry, rage-filled tears until about 10 minutes before the wedding was supposed to start. Story 19. This is not a story about my moronic friend Dave, who was pushing 30 at the time. This is a story about his current girlfriend, Sally. So Dave, a close friend of the groom's, though not in the wedding party, ran out of the ceremony during one of the readings, swearing to himself as he left the church. Everyone was quite confused, but just kind of ignored it as you know. It was the middle of a wedding ceremony. It was almost two weeks before anyone saw him or heard from him after he ran out of the ceremony. Turns out that during the readings, Dave had been casually scrolling through his Facebook feed and came across a post that turned his day upside down. He had forgotten that his ex-GF's best friend's wedding was that very same day, and Dave had been planning on going to it to win his ex back after she had left him a year earlier for a job overseas. He was able to squeeze onto a flight last second and ended up getting to the other wedding just as the reception was starting. Things went well, and he and his ex-GF ended up going on the honeymoon with the newlyweds for a week. Not abnormal. A bunch of the newlyweds' close friends also went. It was some sort of big camping trip. They, however, did not end up together. Oh, and he left his date, Sally, at the first wedding. Sally ended up getting drunk, taking way too much MDMA, flashed the DJ to get the mic, she has an ample bosom, and propositioned the newlyweds for a wedding night close relationship shortly after their first dance. They politely declined. She vomited. Sally and Dave ended up making a go of it and are still together almost two years later. Or do do that. The moral here is pretty murky. Story 20. So, uh, I don't know if this exactly counts, but the worst behavior I've ever seen at a wedding was my own. I was three, four years old, and I was the ring bearer at my favorite aunt's wedding. Well, apparently, I carried the rings up and I got tired of standing around during the ceremony. So what's a kid to do? I put the pillow down, laid down on the pillow, took a nap. Story 21. My wedding. My parents were not invited because my dad generally hasn't behaved himself like a normally socialized human for 70 years. Last minute, they invited themselves to our destination wedding. Thank God our hotel was full. I wanted mom there, but had no way to bring her without the virus. My FIL backed out of walking me down the aisle BC. He didn't want to step on dad's toes. So I walked alone. Dad, a complete narcissist, took over the dinner reception at a nice restaurant by talking about himself in his outdoor voice the entire time. Inappropriate jokes, childish behavior, generally obnoxious. Mom tried to shut him up, but he ignored her. He ignored me the entire day, but made my very small reception his own personal dinner theater. I had to apologize to the guests profusely. You could see how uncomfortable everyone was who sat near him. We deliberately prevented all toasts so he would not be allowed to take the floor entirely. Couldn't leave our own reception fast enough. He then harassed everyone for their email addresses so he could send them his political, uneducated, opinionated, daily nonsense spam. Story 22. My sister's wedding immediately comes to mind. Our youngest brother, 18 at the time, was drinking at the open bar. No big deal, venue owner just asks that he doesn't take any drinks outside. My brother does just that. He got absolutely trashed in the parking lot, and the venue owner threatened to call the cops after warning him more than once. I guess he figured if he couldn't continue drinking, he'd invite his candy dealer friend to the reception and get high instead. 
The cops were eventually called, so he and his dealer friend take all the food they can manage to carry from the buffet table and flee. At least it wasn't a boring night. Story 23. He was technically a guest, so this counts. My friend's wife, to costs, hired a family member to DJ the wedding. Here's the fun train wreck part that I will remember forever. This family member fancied himself to be the next Garth Brooks and decided to showcase his talents to a crowd that wasn't that into country music. So all night he would play a few hits, get people out there dancing. Then he would stop the music and play a country song, most of his own creation, and literally clear the dance floor. Then he would play some more music, we would come out and dance, and he would do it again. Rinse and repeat all night! Bride and groom couldn't do much since he was free and there was no contract. And the best cringiest part? He would serenade his girlfriend. Edit for clarity. I realized I forgot the best part. He wasn't playing recordings of his country songs. Oh, no. He busted out an acoustic guitar and cowboy hat for this. And just to add to it, this wasn't in Texas. This was in Canada. Story 24. The minister, garden ceremony. He decided he should do a sermon on marriage with a heavy-handed emphasis on how women should submit to their husbands. I was minding the music in the back, and it was all I could do to keep from heaving a speaker at him. Then, he got all wound up in his own nonsense, forgot about the bride and groom standing in front of him, and decided that now was the time to issue an altar call for all those who wanted to come up right now and receive Jesus into their lives. The only one who responded was the lady who owned the venue. She marched right up the aisle and spoke to him in an angry whisper that everyone could hear, No altar call! Finish the ceremony! No more sermons! Gotta love the minister's reaction. He got all butthurt and pouty, finished up the ceremony in a monotone, signed the license, and huffed off. Story 25. Tiny wedding with fewer than 20 guests and the groom's sister, who is 37, mind you, did her damnedest to make it all about her. Highlights. Complaining about how the wedding wasn't catered and that we weren't going directly to the reception to get food. Photographs take time. Outdoor wedding in the afternoon. At a park. Of course we're going to take photos. Decided to swoon on a park bench while photos were being taken so that she and her family weren't in most of the photos because they were fawning over. This lasted at least 20 minutes. Not sure why she didn't find food or seek medical attention if it was so bad. We were a five-minute walk from an abundance of food options. Somehow made it the bride and groom's fault she didn't eat breakfast or lunch. Literal blame was placed. Bad person please no one told you not to eat and you knew the wedding wasn't catered and when dinner was. Took food from the groom's plate at dinner without permission because she regretted her choice of meals that the bride and groom got special desserts. There was cake in abundance for all. The chef kindly sent out special treats for the newlyweds. Stole half from her brother, whined to the bride as well for some of hers. Whined to parents that it wasn't fair haven't been to many weddings. So this is not as impressive as some I'm seeing here. The transparent entitlement and envy were on full display throughout the event, and it just never let up. There were so few people that she really did take up all the attention with her constant complaining and need for attention. Story 26. At a friend's wedding, one of the groom's relatives was upset that their daughter wasn't asked to be a bridesmaid, so dressed the daughter in a bridesmaid dress anyway. Same wedding, same side of the family, female guest turned up to the church wearing a hot pink mesh dress, barely passed her arse cheeks and all of her underwear on show. Story 27. This is long, but it sets things up. So my best friend and I, both female, grew up with this guy, Pete, and we all graduated together. He went to college out of state where he met a girl, Tracy, and got engaged. They moved back here, got an apartment, and she got a job that pertained to her degree. A month later, he also got an offer, but it was in a city on the complete opposite side of the state. They spoke with their landlord, who said that one of them had to remain in the apartment for the remainder of the lease. So she agreed to stay for 11 months and they would just do a long-distance relationship for a year. She was looking for a roommate, so he found a girl, Morgan. We went to high school with on Facebook, who was just moving back to town and looking for a place. We weren't friends with this girl, but she seemed reliable and had a job, so we all vouched for her. Morgan immediately stepped in and took control of the wedding. Tracy was very low-maintenance and a bit of a tomboy. Needless to say, she was relieved because she knew nothing of weddings and really didn't have anyone here to help since she was from the other side of the country. At first, this seemed like a great thing, but within a week, Morgan had decided she would be her maid of honor. Tracy was not okay with this and eventually told her she didn't have a MOH in mind, but she didn't feel she knew Morgan well enough for that. That was okay, though Morgan just stepped down to a bridesmaid. Then Morgan Facebook stalked Tracy until she figured out who her middle school best friend was and told her she was the MOH. She also invited Tracy's controlling, yet estranged mother into the mix. When my friend and I tried to step in and talk to Tracy and Pete about all of this, Pete basically threw his hands up and said the wedding was her thing. Tracy was confused and didn't know how to handle it. When she did attempt to approach it, 
This led to Morgan convincing her that having the both of us in the wedding party was more than a traditional wedding party. And there weren't going to be enough groomsmen, so we'd have to go. She felt bad because the other two put so much effort into things she didn't feel right kicking them out. So the day of the wedding arrives. Her mother and bestie from out of state did the seating chart. My best friend and I end up stuck at a random table with throwaway uncles and cousins. It was terrible. Meanwhile, all of our other friends are seated together at a table with two more of her cousins. The cousins were grateful to swap with us, thankfully. The groom's mother breaks down sobbing because her mother refused to let her have any part in the wedding and essentially called her a broke peach bad person in not such colorful terms. The out-of-state best friend proceeds to attempt to everyone out of pictures with the bride who is not a part of the bridal party. Also, when the bouquet was tossed, I caught it. Morgan literally shoved me, screamed like a monster, and attempted to rip the bouquet from my hands. I didn't realize it was so serious, but after I realized it was Morgan, I decided to not let go. She proceeded to hit me with the chunk she ripped off and screamed that she was next. I managed to pull away and squealed, you'll pass away alone, as I ran out of the venue. Good times. Story 28. Friend of my wife's wedding. My first clue that there would be shenanigans was the bar for the reception. It was an outdoor wedding, so the couple had rented a tent, in one corner of which the bar was placed. Above the bar was a sizable neon Bud Light sign. Now, this wouldn't strike me as funny if the wedding was at a club or something that generally has a dedicated bar, but it is a bit humorous that somebody willfully said the wedding needed a neon sign in a tent and actively ran an extension cord to run it. But I digress. During the reception, I observed one individual who was clearly very intoxicated and trying to dance with every woman there. The redneckishness of the whole scene got to me, and I leaned over to my wife and whispered, I bet you dollar five a fight breaks out. She hushed me and scowled that I would make such a suggestion at a joyous occasion. Ten minutes later, the drunk guy must have hit on the wrong woman, because the next thing you know, some guy had picked up a metal folding chair and railed the drunk into next Tuesday, WWE style. I looked over to my wife, smiled, and said, called it. Story 29. My mother-in-law pouted the entire event, got hammered, and also changed four times into different very showy elaborate dresses. She also screamed at our officiant during the rehearsal dinner for not being a priest and not respecting our choice. My brother-in-law had to basically forcibly remove her. Story 30. I've told this story before, probably. My sister-in-law was 15 when my husband and I got married. She was his best man. We gave her an invite with a plus one on it, and she invited her 17-year-old boyfriend. Kid was nice, but had little impulse control, was very immature. Came from a pretty dysfunctional family. We were having a small wedding, approximately 50 people, when my mother-in-law hears through the grapevine two weeks prior that the boyfriend's entire family is planning on attending. Mom, dad, three or four younger, equally ill-behaved siblings. My husband had met them in passing. I had only met the boyfriend. So my mother-in-law has to call up this kid's mom and explain to her very slowly how plus ones work and that only their son is invited. She's crushed at not being invited to a wedding where she doesn't know the people being married. He showed up underdressed, which, whatever, I know his family isn't well off. But he practically had to be babysat the whole night. He didn't seem to understand that my SIL had to sit at the head table, take pictures, etc. And he couldn't have her constant attention. He was trying to hang out at the head table during the speeches and had to be hauled back to his table. Some of our married friends were goofing off on the dance floor with their spouses, and he tries to be funny and gropes my, again, 15-year-old Essil, and a couple of the guys grabbed him and had a little chat with him. They didn't last much longer, thankfully, and my SIL is married to a great guy. But that oh-no kid weaseled his way into a whole lot of the album photos. Story 31. My sister's wedding to my brother-in-law. It wasn't really a guest in particular, but my brother-in-law's dad is a pastor, so I mean, obviously he was the one to marry my sister and brother-in-law. But beforehand, he actually made a couple of secret plus one aces. And by a couple, I mean his entire Sunday congregation, which came to be roughly 150 people. What this meant was that my family who agreed to cater the reception got no food and was stuck with cleanup for like six hours after the wedding. Congregation ate everything, Kay concluded, left a huge mess and left. My wife and I got to share a can of cola we had hidden beforehand for a wedding reception dinner to direct family. My mom was livid. I mean, yeah, I get it. You're a pastor and you're just being nice to your practitioners, but FFS, it's not your wedding. Story 32. A friend of mine who is Indian has a family business where they run a few shops and gas stations. Yes, they are Patels. On the day of his wedding, his future mother-in-law him and his family out because he didn't work in the morning at one of his stores. You know, like on the day of his wedding, he chose not to work behind the counter for once. Her logic was, how will he be a good husband to my precious daughter if he can't even handle his business? Obviously, this caused a huge, which 
probably was even deeper than I understood because of their culture and customs. The wedding did proceed, but the entire magic of the occasion was pretty much ruined. With time, I lost touch with my friend. But word on the street is that his wife and mother-in-law are riding him like a cash cow. Sad. Story 33. My great aunt threw a charcoal bomb at her new daughter-in-law during the first dance with her son. Backstory is that my cousin's mom was really not well in the head. After her husband left her, she did everything in her power to keep him from their son. He was a kid at the time and she groomed him to hate his dad. They had no relationship she was really helicopterish towards him. He grew up and obviously learned about his mom's ways. So he all contact with her for years. She contacted him two years before the wedding and they put the past in the past and rebuilt their relationship. She hated her soon-to-be daughter-in-law but never said it out loud. Her mannerisms and sneaky snide comments showed it. The bride to be confronted the mom and his son threatened to her out his life again if she couldn't accept his fiance. She said sorry things were okay up until the wedding. I'm not too sure what it was compacted in, but all you see are people smiling and taking pictures that turned into cursing, anger-surprised faces because a bunch of pasty stuff is on her dress. I was a kid when I saw this, and I always think about the bride's face. She was mortified, and the mom was once again out of her son's life. She barely comes around for family functions. She was one possessive male from hell. Story 34. Husband's grandmother and aunt do not get along due to a family issue. So one said they were coming, so the other wouldn't, and so on. They both ended up not coming, which bothered him a lot. As they were both a big part in his life, even after they stopped talking to each, he would make sure to spend time with both of them and cow mail. Five years later, they still don't get why he was mad. Story 35. Not really a guest, but the bride herself. My ex's sister's wedding is by far the worst wedding I ever attended. Don't get me wrong, she had to plan a wedding in under a year, because his side of the family could only attend that year, since they were from out of the country. But it didn't excuse how terrible she acted. The wedding itself went without a hitch. But afterwards, she was upset because her husband hadn't told her that she looked beautiful. Even though you could tell from his face he thought she was. When it came to pictures, her mom stumbled a bit during one of the photos, so she grabbed onto her for balance. She then looked at her and snapped to not touch the dress, upsetting the mother. She also didn't take photos with her close friend because he was not appropriately dressed for the wedding, even though she told him he didn't have to dress up. All during the reception, she was texting her husband that she wanted an annulment and left early even though everyone was asking her not to. She then proceeded to have a yelling match with her mother, which resulted in them saying they were dead to each other and not speaking for two years. Story 36. According to the bartender at our wedding, we were an awesome group because no one pooped in a sink. Which means, at some point, this poor gal had been confronted with having to clean a bathroom containing a sink full of human feces. I'm sure she'd seen her fair share of drunken brawls and arguments, vomit, etc. But her own personal nadir was someone shat in a sink. Story 37. Wasn't at the wedding but the rehearsal dinner. Groom's father, who is a Christian pastor, gave a speech that probably managed to offend almost everyone there. Highlights include, Bride must learn to cook his fave foods for when he comes to visit how weird it is that the groom's XDF ended up marrying groom's older brother. XDF and the groom dated in like 8th grade or something for like a week. How he hoped the future child they adopted wasn't or Chinese. How marriage is only between a man and a woman. How women need to submit to their husbands. Story 38. Not too bad because only a few people actually saw it happen. It happened like almost 10 years ago when I was still a teen. So some details are fuzzy. My uncle is a mixed, mostly man. His now wife is a white woman from the deep south whose father is a pastor. They were dating for a few years when they first got engaged. My aunt's parents didn't want her to marry him because think of the children they'll be mixed. Like it was the worst thing in the world. Her mom got over it because my uncle is in love supper charming and her dad seemed to too. Fast forward to the wedding. My aunt happened to be three months pregnant on her wedding day. Her mom knew, most of my family knew, a few friends knew, but her dad didn't know for obvious reasons. A wedding has a way to magically bring out secrets, so of course he somehow found out the real reason why the moved up the date of the wedding. Thank God it was before the actual wedding started, while we were still all in the dressing room getting ready. He busted in there and went on a rant about how disappointing he was that not only was she having a mixed baby, but she these blacks corrupt her in such a way as to have a baby out of wedlock saying her first husband divorced her because of blah 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 literally had the poor woman in tears. Me sitting, my aunt, my mom, her mom, and the bridesmaids sitting there with our moth open. My mom went off on him in all her New York raised fury, the only one to say something and stop his ignorant, rude peach rant and take everyone else out of their shock. She literally him into the corner and me and my family had her back before she got physical. My poor aunt was mortified and her mom dragged him out of the room to talk to him, with my other aunt, my uncle's rational sister, following. 
I don't know what happened after because my mom made me leave. I honestly don't know how they reconciled enough to walk her down the aisle, but he did probably just to save face. Story 39. Went to a vow renewal. The couple were atheists. The wife's mother was a devout Catholic. She comes to the stand and proceeds to slam them for being atheists in front of everyone. I'm honestly surprised that nobody punched her in the mouth. More so because the husband runs a martial arts school, and everyone there was one of his students. Story 40. Got invited to a wedding by a guy I was dating at the time. He proceeded to get drunk and loud. I was chatting with one of his buddies about a friend of mine he should meet. So I tell unpleasant person XBF. He's a cool guy, he should date my friend. And unpleasant person XBF says, Why don't you go fudge him? In front of his friend and his dad. I was mortified. So I go to the bar and order a drink, and unpleasant person XBF asks me to go outside. I think he's going to apologize. Nope. He decides to break up with me. Jerk. Story 41. My mother at my wedding. She has always had huge mood swings that we never know what the trigger is. Day of the wedding, she gets mad about something. All we can come up with later is that my sister, S.I.L., my only bridesmaids, and I were getting our hair done that morning without her. Or possibly that she wasn't invited to the bachelorette party. But neither of those things were planned by me, so I'm not sure why I was being punished for it. Anyway, she ruined every family picture by stone-facing in all of them. Barely talked to me that day and spent the reception crying elsewhere with my dad dealing with her. We think she also made her brother apologize to us for his inappropriate speech at the wedding, but none of us can figure out why he thought it wasn't okay. We ended up just ignoring her, but my sister was super paranoid it could happen again at her wedding. Also, we had the bachelor-bachelorette parties the night before the wedding, which was an awful idea. Everyone was hammered and someone dared my husband to sit on a cactus. He tried to pretend to but fell and actually sat on it. I spent the morning of our wedding hungover and trying to dig cactus spikes out of his butt with tweezers. Hilarious now to laugh at him about. Story 42. I had an old fraternity brother get so violently drunk that he started a fight with the groom and bride. He also spit chew on the pastor and farted during the ceremony. Also broke a bunch of cow and then tried to leave the wedding early but was unable to find his ride. He didn't apologize to the groom for about half a year. Story 43. I have worked in hotels for seven years. When I was the head of security, the groom from the NYE wedding left his wallet on the head table and someone stole it. Now I got called to the restaurant bar because we need to off one very intoxicated gentleman. When I arrive on scene, one of the bridesmaids from this NYE wedding we're hosting is screaming at this guy. I'm trying to calm this woman down when the bartender tells me, Mr. Drunkface has a credit card that isn't his. Well, shucks, I tell my security guard to haul off and call the cops then step slightly away to calm down, Mr. Drunkface's girlfriend. Now where the restaurant bar is located, I can see the hotel lobby and elevator bank through some windows. The elevator opens up and out spills six groomsmen and the groom in their white tuxedos because NYE weddings are classy and they just tear into the bar with some mother flipping purpose. So I'm all, oh, okay, Mr. Drunkface took the groom's wallet. Mystery of the stolen wallet solved. And then the groom just punches this guy right in the face. Not a word, just waltzes up and punches him. Cops show up, Mr. Drunkface gets arrested. Wedding party goes back to their ballroom. Mr. Drunkface's girlfriend is a wreck. Drama, drama, drama. I mean, drunk guy couldn't even buy a drink with the stolen wallet because he was already too drunk. Then he gets punched in the face by the groom. And then he gets arrested and spends the night in jail. Hotels are fun. Story 44. Went to the wedding reception of this guy who works for my dad. This lady was hanging out outside and drinking a beer where some people were smoking the brisket for the reception dinner. Well, she pretty much stayed in her lawn chair the whole time until dinner was served. When she got up, we saw a big, wet spot on her pants. She had gotten so drunk before the dinner was served that she pissed her pants. Story 45. At my wedding, my best friend's mother decided to grab the mic and say she was praying that her son would marry his girlfriend of 10 years with whom he lived. He doesn't believe in marriage. The girlfriend kind of did. And this put pressure on the relationship which ended it. Edit. Word. Story 46. My dad got drunk at my sister's wedding and ended up poured water in a candy plant in front of 1,000 guests. Edit. IDK, if it was actually 1,000 guests, it was too many to fit in the ceremony, and most people showed up for the reception instead, which is where the incident happened. Edit 2. I'm Australian and we say candy plants instead of potted plants. Sorry for the confusion. I wish it was an actual candy plant Elmau. My dream wedding will have that. Story 47. I attended a wedding where the single mother of the bride knocked down a little girl and took the bouquet from her during the bouquet toss. Little girl was probably around five or six. It landed right in her hands and she was so happy. M.O.B. wasn't having it. She was behind the little girl and pulled her backwards and fell on her, snatching the flowers away. Little girl cried. M.O.B. celebrated and cheered. Everyone else gasped and cringed. 
Several ran to the aid of the little girl. Moby said it was okay the girl told her she could have it, that the little girl just wanted to play bride, and we could make her another bouquet. She then happily bounced away. Story 48. An uninvited guest at my wedding had her personal little camera. We had a professional photographer. Professional photographer had set up professional lights that go off when they detect a flash. Professional photographer had to deal with the guest's flash setting off her lights all night. Even asked the pro to help fix her flash when it stopped working. Story 49. My grandmother got remarried after my grandfather passed away. Her wedding was right after Sunday service at her church, and the pastor mentioned that there would be free food to anyone who wanted to attend the wedding. Everyone stayed and ate all the food before any of her family got anything to eat. I've never heard of a wedding where the family didn't get served first. Story 50. Wasn't necessarily a guest, but in a way I was that person. It was, I believe, sixth grade-ish. I was going to my friend's house one day who lived about a block away. Now his dog, Birch, was notorious for escaping. I was about two houses down, and I saw the dog running full tilt through the front yard and across the street. I ran after him only to be able to get a hold of him after someone grabbed him. I'll get to how someone grabbed him in a second. So after I saw the dog, I went running after him. Turns out there was a wedding taking place a couple houses down. The dog picked the perfect time to escape as he ran down the aisle with the bride during the outside wedding. I yelled, someone grab that dog, and the groom caught him for me. I told my friend the story, and it's still something we both talk about. Story 51. At my wedding, large, somewhat fancy, traditional wedding, we were on dance floor, having our first dance as the photographer took pics and videographer took video. When one of my husband's high school friends came right up on the dance floor, tapped him on the shoulder and said loudly, Hey man, we're going to take off now. It ruined the video, and the videographer had to do some fancy editing to it out. This was 15 years ago. My husband's biker cola head aunt was in town for the wedding and staying at his mom's house with MIL and 2SIL, and on the day after the wedding, they learned she'd given everyone in the house scabies. After my honeymoon, I learned that a member of the venue staff had rifled the purses of every woman in the bridal party because they were all in the same closet and stolen nearly $400 in cash. We complained to the venue owner and they said there was nothing they could do, as three of their staff members had quit the day after my wedding, and we didn't know who had done it. Story 52. I was a bridesmaid in a wedding party featuring an extremely pregnant bride and an extremely drunk groom. However, they were not the problem. The problem was the bride wanted her divorced mother and father to walk her down the aisle, and the stepmother took incredible offense to be excluded, pitched a hangry toddler-worthy fit. Like most people, the bride only had two arms. So what would have been a very sweet, slightly crowded procession of bride, mother of the bride, and father of the bride turned into a weird mob of people basically being dragged by the bride while they all tried not to trip over the veil train. Stepmom further made an peach of herself by getting drunk and grinding on any of the groomsmen she could get within a foot of on the dance floor. Story 53. Backstory. My paternal grandmother, who allowed her son me dad to get abused by her brother, was not invited to my wedding. Because of the abuse, my dad had really bad PTSD and had to go away for treatment for a month. The day of my wedding, she tries to show up with one of my aunts, who was also not invited because she called my dad a liar. He has been a minister for almost 40 years. As she was entering the building, I went out and calmly explained to her that she was not invited and she needs to leave. She started throwing a fit about how I am her firstborn grandchild. And she will be here and no one can stop her from coming into a church. Blah, blah, blah. I had a feeling something like this would happen and had my groomsmen on alert. I gave them a look and a nod and they blocked her entrance and she spit on one of them. I'm not for hitting women, but I would have let her get punched in the face. She finally gave up when one of them threatened to call the police. Story 54. I went to a wedding that concluded with a ride on a boat under the Mackinac Bridge, where the bride and groom had a light dinner and their cake. But at that point, it was quite late after a long day of drinking, and two of the couple's friends started to hook up, which may sound not so bad, but they decided to do it discreetly at the very front of the boat, in a well-lit area where most of the guests faced while sitting on the boat benches. They were incredibly drunk, and she was using him as a rebound from a very freshly ended relationship. Sloppy, loud kissing and grinding for everyone to see. The bride especially was so disgusted. Story 55. My restaurant has an awesome patio, and someone decided to have their wedding and their reception there. When it came time to pay their $3,000 tab, no one had their credit cards, and they refused to pay. We ended up holding a couple of people back while the bride went to get her card. They only tipped 10%. Story 56. At my wedding, my mother toasted, Every gray hair on my head is from that girl right there. Good luck, Ben, my husband. 
I hope this one lasts. In all fairness, it was my third wedding and I thought it was hilarious. At a friend's wedding, the best man revealed that the couple's baby was not the groom's. Only a handful of people knew this and it was quite the scandal for a hot minute. For both stories, the couples are still together. Story 57. I sat by my mother at my cousin's wedding because sometimes I think she might not be in peach. I'm always wrong. My cousin was walking down the aisle and my mother whispered to me, Do you think her balls are real? People three rows ahead of us looked back at us so it wasn't a quiet whisper. Story 58. I got in a fight at one of my best friend's wedding. Everyone was drinking at one of my friends got angry that I didn't want to leave when he wanted to leave. We didn't go together. Never talked about leaving at the same time. I was in the wedding, so I was staying put. He headbutted me, then I threw a few punches. My cousin was standing right there. He started throwing punches at the guy. The groom heard the commotion from the parking lot, came running, started punching the guy. Long story short, we're all friends now. They bride's dad likes to tell everyone I got in a fight at his daughter's wedding every time I see him. Story 59. Wedding was at this cute venue that was basically a house with a pavilion outside. Bride got so drunk at the reception that the groom just went home, and she spent the night lurching around the house with glasses of champagne, having her friends take pictures of her in the dry bathtub, then got a ride to the house where she was staying, with the guy we later found out she'd been cheating with for months, before and after the wedding. Story 60. Was a bridesmaid at a friend's wedding about a week ago, and the wedding coordinator was the worst guest I've ever seen. Not only did she have no idea what she was doing, but also she was rude to the entire wedding party before the wedding, and ate a piece of the bride's cake before the couple got to. And those are the things she did that were easy to type out with little explanation. Story 61. I wasn't actually at this wedding. I ducked out of it with the excuse that I had to work. Technically true, I just didn't mention the fact that I could have easily gotten a few days off if I tried. Because my cousin is a crazy vegan hipster, and I didn't want any part of that. Fortunately, my parents brought back all the juicy details. Skipping over the reasons why the wedding blew and was insane, I'll get to the guest behavior issue. I should mention first that my cousin was the bride in this scenario. Well, the priest announced the couple after marrying them, and it was then revealed that the couple was taking her name. Unusual, but whatever. Well, apparently the groom's parents hadn't been told about this. They immediately got out and left in a huff, and most people didn't see them again. Before everyone left the hotel area, everyone was staying the next day. That's pretty bad behavior. Though arguably worse was a little while later when they sent the groom a package, which contained a bunch of photos of him from throughout his life and all of his baby clothes. 